Hi, Scott Thistle with Brookstone Homes. I'm here with Brandon Ingen from Dave Jones Plumbing and Heating. How you doing? Good. So, this is pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Tankless hot water heater, huh? No yep. big sort of round tank there. It's not storing water at any given moment. Tell me tell me a little bit how this works. Basically, it's an in instantaneous water heater as far as, uh, as water is flowing through it. It's being heated as it's being used and it doesn't have a large storage tank, storage tank full of water. This is basically a, a commercial hot water heater now sort of modified for a house, right? Yeah, basically that's that's correct. It's, yeah. We kind of look at it almost like a wall-hung boiler. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So um, so really, I mean, it, it's it's simple, very simple in its design. Water comes, the cold water comes in, runs across uh, some exchangers. There's a blower fan in there, right? That's correct. That heats it, and then it goes back out. But it, it heats at such a high temperature and so quickly that it basically heats on call almost, right? That's right. Basically, uh, the water flows through it uh, in... Once the water is turned on to the tap, it uh, flows through the unit and there's a little flow sensor and once it hits uh, half a gallon a minute, it kicks the unit on and it heats it up to temperature. Uh, there's a series of burners in here, bring out as many burners as it needs to satisfy what it has to do. And um, it sends the water out and that's about it. So this is, I mean, if you just think about it, this has got to be one of the most efficient units out there in the market because a normal wa hot water heater during the day, if the kids are off at school and you're off at work, it's actually heating the water. That's correct. It's heating the water the whole time you're there, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, whether you're using it or not. And basically, the old water heater, the generation before the tankless, would have been about 64% uh, efficient. This unit here is 98% efficient to kind of compare how the two stack up to each other. And this is a, a gas appliance, right? That's correct. It's gas fired, just like your standard water heater here would be. And uh, it's got a real large burner, and so when it's calling for water, there's a lot of gas going into the fire at one time. Great. So Brandon, this, I mean, this really is an efficient unit, but let, let's face it, it doesn't cost what a normal hot water heater costs, right? That's correct. Yeah, you're looking at probably about a one to $2,000 upgrade to go to a unit like this. So you're going to be kind of in it for the long haul. You know, it's going to take a while to get your money back, but it's really an efficient unit and you will gain your money back over time. Well, that, you know what? I, I mean, $1,000 to $2,000, actually, I would expect it to be more. That doesn't really sound that bad to me. Yeah, they've come down in price now that they've been out for a while and there's some competition driving the price down. Well, you know so, Brent, I'll tell you, I know who would love this hot water heater. My 13-year-old daughter would just be all over this. She could get in the shower and stay in there for 20 minutes, right? That's right. It'll never stop producing hot water as long as there's water flowing through it and there's gas going to the appliance. So it's really a fantastic option for big families. That's correct. Good. So I noticed uh, up here that there's a couple pipes sort of going in and out. I mean, down here we have the water sort of water in and out. But up there, what's, what, what's that about? Well, basically, this is more like a furnace under actual water heater. It's got an intake and an exhaust. So it's going to pull fresh air, combustible air in from the outside. That's what helps give it the higher efficiency rating. Great. Um, let's uh, let's crack this thing open and see what it sure. looks like inside. <clears throat> so it's a lot of stuff in there, huh? Yeah, as you can see, it's not your standard water heater. A little more uh, technology going into a unit like this than your standard tank type water heater. Yeah, I don't see any water in there either. No, you don't see any water. <laughs> Everything's contained within this silver box here. This is a stainless steel heat exchanger, and that's where everything's really happening. The water's passing through this exchanger. That's where all the burners come on, superheats the water as it's passing through the unit. One thing I do notice, though, is that there's a little breaker right here. That's so, correct. I mean, sort of an obvious maintenance thing. If it, if it did stop working at one point, that would be a breaker that you'd want to check, right? That's right. What are, what are some of the other things you want to check just from a maintenance standpoint? Another thing you can do is they do have an inline filter in there, and the inline filter could get plugged up over time, causing the flow rate to drop down and causing problems for the unit. Great. Anything else? I mean, these things are pretty pretty low maintenance. Yeah, they're pretty low maintenance, and when you, if, the, if it ever does require servicing, it's a lot of uh, technical parts where it's not really going to be a homeowner issue. Right. So then, Brandon, the last thing I, I guess I saw over here, and, and you, the camera probably can't get it, but there's the thermostats back there, and it's a digital thermostat. Yeah, that's right. It's a real simple thermostat. It's got an up and down arrow, so you can uh, tailor the temperature to whatever you want it to be. And what's a safe temperature, really, for a hot water heater to be set at? We never want anybody to see anything over 120 degrees. 120 degrees, if it gets over that, you're really at risk of scalding. That's people, correct. Right? Yeah. Okay, and not... It also is going to be, uh, you know, take more gas to heat heat the water. The higher it gets, right? Yeah. What happens is it it'll actually slow the flow rate down because the water heater will satisfy the temperature, but if it is overworked and it's trying to get too hot, it'll just slow the flow rate down and only allow so much water to go through to meet that temperature that it's set at. Oh wow, that's good to know. I didn't even think about that. But if you got to get the temperature higher, it's easier to do that with less water. That's correct. Good. Well, great.